everyone, this is Shira and welcome back to my channel. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you so much for all your amazing and lovely comments. Uh, it really gives me the fuel and the encouragement to keep thinking of new subjects and new content for this channel. So thank you, thank you so much. Today I have for you a different kind of video. Uh, it is a tutorial or uh, process, uh, but today I wanted to do something a little bit funny, uh, a little bit weird maybe, and to try to answer the question, can I make a wearable mixed media project? And the answer is yes. Yes, we can. Uh, it turned out quite nice. It's not amazing. Uh, it definitely doesn't go with everything. Uh, and it's not anyone, <laughs> everyone's taste, uh, but it turned out really cute and it was fun, which was the main point of, of this whole process, of this whole idea. And I ended up with one of a kind conversational piece, because for sure anyone that sees me wearing it um, is like, what is it made of? What is it? So at least for one minute, uh, random people find themselves thinking or or looking at wearable art which is kind of cool if you think about it so this is what I end up with um, tum, tum, tum. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you can see because of the lighting uh, and this camera is not the best this was unfortunate the, those dogs I'm sorry I'm filming uh, on my balcony and it's, what can I do? Okay, I'm not sure how uh, well the camera can pick it up, but I have a lot going on here uh, and I will add close-up photos uh, in the end of the video. I have here uh, crackle paint, blacks, and gesso, and really a lot of yummy texture. And this is how it looks when I wear it. Again, not everyone's taste, but uh, sure is cool, I, I have to tell you. Uh, sure is cool. So I wanna remind you uh, about my new hashtag, uh, make art easy, and I would love for you to use it uh, in case you find my videos inspirational or uh, it gets you start to creating something. I would love, love, love to see it and I think this is the easiest way. You can also find me on Instagram and, and tag me uh, at Chira Studio. And now, without further ado, I'm going to move you to the voiceover uh, and let's have fun, let's get started. All right, so I'm starting with an unfinished wooden bangle that I picked up at the dollar store and I'm just covering it with two coats of white gesso just to give it some good surface and I'm moving on to a layer of crackle paint. Now crackle paint, crackle glaze and, and crackle paste are exactly the same in case you were wondering uh, with slight uh, variations between them. You can find it uh, from many different brands uh, and carriers I really like this brand, I think it's called Media, it's super cheap. The best thing about this specific product is that I can dry it with my heat tool. Usually crackle paint uh, or crackle paste, whatever, uh, you cannot. You just need to leave it outside until it completely dries. But here with this one, I find that there's no problem. I just dry it with my heat tool and everything is great. Now a quick tip about crackle paint. If you add more material, you get bigger cracks. If you add lesser or a thinner coat of the material, you get the small ones. So I like to mix the two and it gives it very interesting look. Okay, now that everything is dry, I'm going to move on and decide what embellishments I'm going to use. I'm using here leftovers of crochet uh, lace napkin and some metal piece I had. And what I'm going to do is to give it two, three coats of gesso just for me to be able to paint it later. Uh, be very careful if you're using a heat tool, uh, especially on metal, it can burn your hands. I burned myself many times this project. 
and nothing too serious, but uh, if you can avoid it, that's obviously better. Uh, so um, I'm just checking to see what is noticeable uh, when I'm going to glue it. When I work with laces, I really like to fray them and to move them around to give them uh, this worn look because for me this is a texture material, this is the way I look at it. So I'm gluing everything and while I'm gluing I'm just checking to see uh, what pieces I can add. As you can see I'm just adding some scrap lace here and there. So now that everything is set, I'm going to start adding my texture all around. I'm using here the mini art stones. You can supplement and use whatever you have on hand, including glass beads that a lot of us have uh, from various times and you don't really know what to do with them. In mixed media, that could be really awesome. I just added a little bit to my gesso, painting everything, my lace and uh, my background and adding the stones uh, because they're so tiny it's going to glue them I don't need to use gel medium at this point so today I'm going to work with a very cool product it's called magical by Lindy's and basically what it is it's a pigmented powder that once you add water to it uh, you'll see the color now if you don't have those you can use spray mist you can use a pigmented watercolor uh, it will pretty much will work the same uh, and all I do I water my surface a little bit and start to add the powders now I have two more videos of using this type of paint uh, this type of powder I'm going to link them above uh, in case you want a very quick and easy project that you can use uh, with watercolors or if you have those magicals they're really cool to use and the result is really impressive. Now the way I prefer to work with all my water-based paints is basically patiently and, and adding layers on top of each other. Uh, it takes a little bit more time. It does make you go back and forth and wait for things to dry, but it usually gives a much better effect uh, if you do it this way because you have all the drips and areas where you have more pigment and less pigment. Okay, so this is where I'm at. This is how it looks where uh, my paints are dry. And now I can move on to continue embellishment and work on my textures. I'm going to use various flax, uh, mica flax, and all kinds of beads and uh, glass glitter or stones. Really whatever will feel right uh, from my stash. But first of all, I'm trying to decide on my focal point. Uh, and this project is going to be flowers. I'm in a very summery, uh, romantic mood these days. Uh, very pinkish. Uh, so I'm going to go with it. As you can see, I'm going to go with three flowers in different sizes and shapes. The colors are important and they should go together, but you will see that once I'm done, the colors are going to change a lot. And that's due to my next step. So I'm just adding more scrap laces and some metal embellishment just to give it more texture, different kind of look. And it just, it, it makes it very, very interesting. Now that I'm happy with everything and everything is glued and set, I'm going to do a whitewash or a dry brush technique, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I'm going to tone all the colors down, especially my background, which is ultra pink. And I'm not actually a pink girl, but as I said, I am in a kind of pinkish mood lately and um, I did produce some pinkish work. Uh, but this is still too vivid and too vibrant uh, for my taste. So I'm just going all around and the best tip I can give you with this technique, which by the way works on every project, is to build your layers. That means don't try to put too much paint in one time. It needs to be very thin, very dry coats of paint. Uh, you need to be very gentle when you move the brush. 
That's why I use fan brush. That's my hack, you can say, because it gives me much more control and it distributes the paint uh, much easier. But the key is just to keep it really, really light. And now that everything is dry, I can move on and add some flakes. Now I'm using here uh, mica flakes from two different companies. It really doesn't matter, they just have different proportions and that's the reason why I mix the two. To glue my flakes and my glitter, I'm using a soft matte gel. You can use whatever gel you have. I'm just picking up the gel with my brush and then the flakes and then I put it on the project. Spreading it all around uh, in places where it makes sense to me. I like to use them on the petals as well and on the rest of the project I'm just going in a circular motion, uh, a wavy, uh, I don't know if it makes sense, um, but just trying to put it in areas where it makes sense to me. And that's it, once everything is dry I have a lot of texture here uh, but it's not really visible because the flakes are sheer and shiny uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to repeat the last step which was uh, the whitewash with the acrylic or gesso and I'm just going to go all over it because I want the texture to show so I'm just doing a final coat of the whitewash all over it also helps to tone everything some more uh, which I really like and that's it friends, uh, basically I'm done. Uh, the only thing I have left to do is to take out my beloved hairspray as you know if you watch my videos and to give it a good coat of it. Uh, it really makes the color pop in my opinion and it, I don't know, maybe protects it a little bit, I'm not sure. And here is the final photos. I'm not sure this project photographs the best but I think you get the point. It looks much better in real life, but you get the texture and the overall feel of it, uh, I hope. So thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know in the comment section uh, what you guys think of the concept of wearable art or wearable projects. I really would like to know. And if you did like this video, I would really appreciate thumbs up, consider subscribing, and if you do, don't forget to hit the little bell icon next to it uh, so you won't miss any of my uploads. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye!